closed captioning for a piece of the woods was made possible by Schroeder Log Home Supply, providing for the log builders for 20 years. Underwriting for a piece of the woods was brought to you by Tenonizer Technology. 25 years providing the log industry equipment and techniques to simplify perfection. Great Woods Cabinetry, providing custom cabinetry and more to the Twin Cities and now everywhere, from online to on-site. From Minnesota, an online resource for log enthusiasts. And Quality Manufacturing, building quality portable sawmills is in their reputation. If you've spent any time shopping for log furniture, you know that a major part of the quality of the furniture has to do with the joinery. Is it nice and solid? Is, or does it squeak around, weak, 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 like a loosed up bed? You, you don't want that. Today, we're gonna go through building this dresser. First class, best of choices as far as the drawer guides and things, but also very good joinery built into the dresser. So stay tuned for today's A Piece of the Woods. What you see here is what we're going to be using for making our dressers. Now we have pre-cut this wood to force all the shrinkage, all the cracking to take place in one place. Now we've made a little kerf cut, just an eighth of an inch wide and almost to the center of the log, but it's going to force as it dries, it forces all of the shrinkage, all of the cracking to take place in just this one, in this one area. The rest of the log, just little hairline, real fine little cracks, and that's about it. But that'll work very good for what we want to do with our dressers. Now, what you don't see is behind this pile is our forced air furnace here in the shop. And it just blowing hot, dry air across this material dries it down very well. Now, if you look down the line here, if I hold that, just so you can see, you can see right straight down the line, a little tiny bit of a twist in there, but you can see how much this opened up here. Of course, all of the cracking, it would have occurred all the way around this thing. You see there's no cracks in it. Occurred right in this kerf cut here, which relieved the pressure, let it all move in one spot. But now I got to get this 90 degree cut in here. And it's easiest on this mill. I know you haven't got a mill like this at home, probably. We're gonna show you another way to do it later. But the things on this dresser really have to be cut very close to make it work. These blocks are exactly 90 degrees square, so we'll make the one cut, turn it 90 degrees, make the other cut, and this kerf cut will be removed. That won't exist any longer. It will have done its thing. There, look at that. Perfect is good enough. Now on our, on our corners of the dresser, we're gonna have a right and a left for the front, and we gotta cut an edge along here. 
Gonna cut it just as, so we have an inch and a half left. That's what we need left. So we're setting this up right now to hold this while the cutting takes place. Now remember when you make these, you've got to have a right and a left. So on each side of the cabinet, on each side of the dresser, excuse me, the branches are pointing up. Remember, bubbles go up, branches go up. Okay, now remember, this is a log dresser. This is supported by log. It is not a log accent work dresser. It is a log dresser. The logs are the support structure of it. Log is gonna be the main component. Everything is gonna be built in our dresser. Everything's built around it. So we gotta, we're gonna be using these, these two surfaces to make our initial cuts on there because that is, has to be precise. So to do that, we've got a cradle here that is square to the, square to the saw so we can cut these things off exactly perfect. Our helpful hint for today is how to get this, one of our dresser corners, how to make that with a skill saw. That's what we're gonna show you how to do now. We've got our workpiece. Of course, it's got the kerf cut in it, same as the rest of them, to let it all crack right there, same thing. Now, what we're gonna use, piece of angle iron. We've got a few holes drilled in it, so we've got some choices of where we're gonna fasten this down. We're gonna get this fastened down to our corner. And I'm putting the screws in where the steel actually bumps up against the wood. We don't want any distortion. We don't want to twist the angle iron at all. Now we're going to check it for twist. And we're going to do that with a couple of vice grips and then a couple of straight edges. Sight from one end to the other across these little pieces of steel that I got clamped on here. And is that flat from one end to the other? Can you see the other one down there? Okay, the angle iron that I've got here, the angle iron is two and a half by two and a half and a quarter inch thick. I've got guides set on the saw here. It's just bolted into the, into the base of the saw. And I've got from the center of the, or from the, from the far side of the blade over to the edge of the fence, I've got three inches. So it's gonna take a three inch cut. We're gonna come down one side, turn around and come back down the other. There. That comes out, and we have an absolutely perfect corner for our dresser. Some parts of this dresser are very critical. That being, things need to be precisely square. But other things really don't make a whole lot of difference. Uh, we're going to make our, our dresser the box of it, we're going 27 inches wide and we're going 21 inches deep. And I don't have any scrap from a sheet of plywood because it works out to be 48 inches and it's easy to cut. As far as the, the height of it, we're going 60 inches tall. Our legs, that we, or our corners, our support mechanism, logs, 60 inches tall. But then we can also cut the plywood for our sides and back at 60 inches tall and it'll all fit together and it all makes sense as we go along. A lot of this is really pretty simple on part of it. Now I know you're saying quarter inch plywood, you have got to be kidding. Just wait, this will be the most indestructible dresser you have ever seen. It's just in how you put it all together, so it'll work. Now, this is the one edge of this log that's gonna show. The drawer fronts are gonna be right around here and this little edge, we wanna plane that nice and smooth because it will show later.
Now there are, of course, right and left to each side, and we want to make sure that as the dresser goes together that the branches all point up. As we start fastening the plywood to our, the box of our dresser, we're going to be bringing it up two inches up from the base of the dresser so the ends of the logs come down as little feet to support everything. Yeah, you're right. Since we cut the plywood and the log the same length, and since the log sticks out two inches on the bottom to support our dresser, yeah, it does stick out two inches on the top. And it's going to look funny for a little while. One thing that's nice in putting them together like this is that you can mix and match the parts. I, mean, I had a lot of corners sitting out there, but I chose ones that blend together. So I got four that are quite similar that'll go on our dresser. Okay, there's one side of our dresser, and what you get automatically, look at this, see how perfect this fits here, along this edge, that happens automatically. You don't even have to try very hard. This is the back of our dresser now. And we can let this plywood just settle down on top of the other to hold it straight. Because remember, we need to end up with a perfectly square box. It'll make everything so much easier. Yes, that is oak plywood on the back of our dresser. But I want to keep the option sometimes of it just sitting alone as like a room divider kind of a thing or a big master bedroom and set the thing so you see the back of the dresser. And remember, this is not like kitchen cabinets. Kitchen cabinets use the house structure to support this thing. This, have to be, this has to be totally invincible, self-supporting, okay? As part of our, the box of our dresser, we've got a, a one by four that goes these three edges, and then there's a three quarter inch by eight inch plywood that goes across here. But on these one by fours at the base, I can't put screws in from the other side because they'll show. So we're gonna put the board in, clamp it, or glue it and clamp it, and then it'll let it dry. Of course, I gotta hold the board up quarter inch from the bottom so we can get our plywood base in here. And then we've got the other little board underneath it here so we don't mark up our plywood. We've got the backing boards all in the bottom now, all clamped into place. Now we just need to get the ones put in the top. We're going to hold it down a quarter of an inch from the top again so we can fit our plywood into the top. And we're going to use the air nailer in the corner so we don't split the thing with the screws. And we're going to use these little bitty little bitty sheetrock screws here for holding that. So after we get our trim around the top of our dresser, you won't see these little screws anymore. So we can get away with these instead of, instead of clamping everything. nails that we're using in here, these uh, two inch long finish nails, they got, they're skinny little nails so they don't split anything, but they're tre tremendous holding power in them. Besides that, they're fast. 
Here's some ideas for when you're planting your forest. I know that initially, if you do a clear cut, it can look a little bit rough, but in a lot of ways, it's very good for, for the regrowth. See, you clear cut in the winter time, and the sap that's down in the roots of especially aspen trees, these aspen trees will grow up, well, they'll pop up out of the ground wherever the roots have been. So they'll come up from the root stock if it's cut during the winter time. And aspen makes an excellent cash crop, very good cash crop. Now, other thing that you'll see here, they've left some scattering in Norway pine trees, these red pine. Now that's one of the few trees, especially here in Minnesota, that will survive. You cut all the trees out from around them, leave the Norway pine. They've still got quite a few years to grow, but the winds won't come along and blow them down. They've got a root system that's able to survive, you know, the strong, you know, straight line winds that would blow most other trees down if they were left stand and everything else cut out from around them. Into the Woods was made possible by Quality Manufacturing. Our dresser is still a little bit wiggly, but only in certain places. It's because the plywood has strength, it might have, have strength this way, but it's got tremendous strength as far as corner to corner, this will not move this way. It's floppy like this, but the other way, it's extremely solid. So we lock in the side with a panel, we lock in the back with a panel, and the top, that's gonna, this will lock the top in so the top has no movement to it. And then we're gonna add a piece at the base of our dresser, a three quarter inch piece of plywood to lock the base in so that we'll lock the front of our dresser in so it's absolutely rigid so there'll be no movement to it. Remember, this is a standalone piece of furniture. All right, see here now, we're, come over here and take a look. Come around, come around. Okay, see how this corner is not, can you see that? How this corner is not square here. See, it's open right here. All right, we're gonna use this sheet of plywood to pull it in so it is square, and once we lock it in there, it's gonna be there forever. A little bit more. and that will be there, tight, solid, square forever. Okay, we can pull all our clamps off now. They are, serve their purpose. And get our plywood on the bottom here and stiffen up the last, we'll put this one in. Oh, I see that one's pulled too, but we'll get that worked out of there. And this, this sheet of plywood will pull that back in to where it's square. If things are precisely square, all the drawers will fit very easy, all the drawer guides will fit nice. If it's not square, you will have a fit, an absolute fit with everything, trying to get it all in there and correct. There. We've got a little bit of a twist to get out of this front before we mount the board in here. It's an eighth of an inch off on two feet, and that is not acceptable, not even close. We're gonna add this little brace in here so we can pull it corner to corner and pull it into its correct position. And then we'll put our last board in here that locks the whole front together. Okay, Josh, get back in your corner over there. And you're gonna push it this way, but don't push me over. Okay, now we'll check it with the square again. Oh man, you, 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 you went too far with that. It's within a 64th. 
Okay, now we'll add that. That'll slide in just like that. Little glue come out. And this this board will lock in the whole front of the dresser be stronger than any face frame could be, which most of the guys use as a face frame, but uses up too many too much space. It's like hallways in a house. Hallways in a house are kind of pointless. If you can design a house that so doesn't have hallways, then you get all that free space. Hallways are wasted space. Face frames take up too much room. Just think how many socks you can get in a dresser instead of having the space that face frames would take up. There, and we'll get about a dozen screws in each side and it will be invincible. After we get this one fastened, I'm still gonna put one more one by four right above here, right behind this little strip here, and that will support the front there. We're gonna need to get this tipped off of here so I can reach those. There goes the glue. There, and that is our basic frame. Still got some more screws to put in it, but that's the basic frame. And then we'll go to the top and finishing this off up here. On the back of our dresser, we're gonna have a three inch thick arch block of wood that, that comes across the top there. And we're gonna, because of the trim that's on there, it's gonna stick out the end almost three and a half inches on each side. So we're gonna have a finished length of about 34 inches. And we'll take it out of this block of stuff here. Another piece of plywood on the top here that's going to be our finish. As you saw, I shot ugh, screws all over in the top here. Now we're going to put another layer on top of here, and our trim that goes around will have a little rabbit cut, so it's going to sit on top of that on top of that little edge to wrap around the edge of the plywood. Headboard, it's a dresser board. That'll get fitted in something like that. We've still got to cut our little dado cut into the back here. It's kind of a rabbit cut, I guess you'd call it. So it sets over the top of this plywood we're putting on top of our dresser. Now this white pine. It gets a, this big of a slab gets a real heavy sap that, that it sits on the surface, a little bit more than what we can get off with just the buffer. So I scrape it off like this, and especially once it's been in the kiln, the, that sap gets kind of hard and it oozes out a little bit more. But of course, it's got to be in the kiln because this material for your dresser has to be dry. Can't use wet stuff; it'll just cause you. To This is the trim that we're going to be wrapping around the top of our dresser. Oh, and remember, always aim for the moves. Huh? <laughs> Anyhow, this is the trim we're going to be wrapping around the top here, and as much as possible, if you can make this piece in, all three pieces, out of one piece, 
much better because it'll wrap right around the corner and everything will match up much better. It's nice and tight. And then we'll plug that hole later. About all we got left on the box of the cabin, we got holes to plug and, and a couple other little sanded here and kind of touch up kind of stuff. Otherwise, this is pretty well put together. Next coming is our drawer fronts. Getting the drawer fronts is going to depend on the size of the drawers. The measurements has been emailed to Joel Simler since Mike's shop isn't set up with cabinet tools. Once Great Woods Cabinetry has completed them, Mike will be able to finish this solid dresser next time on A Piece of the Woods. For a copy of this episode, or for questions and information, go to www.apieceofthewoods.com. Closed captioning for A Piece of the Woods is made possible by Shorter Log Home Supply, providing for the log builders for 20 years. Underwriting for A Piece of the Woods was brought to you by Tenonizer Technologies, providing the log industry equipment to simplify perfection. Great Woods Cabinetry, providing custom cabinetry and more from online to on-site. From Minnesota, an online resource for log enthusiasts. And Quality Manufacturing, building quality portable sawmills is in their reputation.